No, we, we all know that the nicknames we Lou. Yeah. But there's another one called Young Fella. Oh, uh -huh. so where did that come from? Uh, when I was playing in Seattle, you know, I came out of high school being a teenager, playing with, uh, and with, with a lot of grown men. And, you know, they started calling me Young Fella. Um, just because I was 18 years old, you know, playing against guys 30 years old, 25, so they started started the young fella back then. So, like you said, you play in the league right after high school. Yeah. And the league started talking about, you know, make the young talent become pro early. Right, right. So, you think that's a good thing or it's a bad thing? It can be good and bad. You know, I think um, if you're talented enough, like, say, like LeBron James or Kobe Bryant that was ready to play in the NBA, you know, right out of high school, uh, but there's some kids it takes a little bit of adjustment um, to if it's on the court or off the court you know like myself didn't go to college I wasn't experiencing living on my own and you know uh, buying food for myself my mom pretty much did everything yeah. so you go from that position to being in the NBA being a grown man I think it affects the little things on the court if you're not mentally prepared to be ready for life on the outside of the court with the third pick in the second round of the NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics select Rashard Lewis. I thought I would get picked in the first round. I was invited to the draft, um, but it didn't happen that way. I slipped to the second round, um, second pick in the second round, which I was afraid because I wasn't guaranteed a contract and had to make the team. Um, but, you know, I think it motivated me more than anything to work hard and go out there and prove myself that I belong in the league. And, and the ultimate goal was to make the team because I didn't, I had an agent, I couldn't go back to college. I was a young kid, so I was scared to go overseas and play. So my ultimate goal was just make the team and then I would try, you know, build my career from there. And then uh, once I signed the two year deal for the minimum, uh, I just kept getting better and always was working hard, working on my game and I was able to stick in the NBA. Do you still remember it? Uh, welcome to the NBA moment for oh, yeah. yourself. Oh yeah. I remember it was a lockout year um, and then when they ended the lockout, I went to Seattle and then uh, there was playing pickup just before practice started and, and, and the guy, the trainer that was picking me and Jelani McCall up from the hotel, uh, he was a little late so we got to the gym late for the pickup game and as soon as we walk in the gym, Gary Payton stops in the middle of the game and just started cussing me and Jelani McCoy out, just screaming and yelling at us and saying, y'all are late, y'all gotta be here on time. So we got nervous with kids and we pointed to the trainer like it was all his fault and he was like, I don't care, y'all gotta get in this and that. And that was kind of like, welcome to the NBA, young fella. You know, as soon as I walk in, before I even step on the court, he starts screaming and yelling at me. So I was like, okay, this is serious. I got to be prepared, be here early, and I got to be ready to go before Gary Payton gets here. <laughs> so, so what's your rookie duty? Uh, I used to have to bring donuts in the morning. What? Um, yeah, like uh, even on the road, you know, sometimes teammates would forget their slippers at home. We had wear slippers in the locker room. Um, or around the hotel and I would have to go to the mall to buy slippers for, for, the, for some of my teammates. Uh, whatever the veteran guys wanted me to do, I had to do it. So when did you start to get some star treatment? Uh, six years, maybe six years in the end. You, after you play your rookie dudes, you can't, even after your second or third year, you can't be that guy to tell rookies what to do. You have to be more of a veteran. So they said five years or more, then you can kind of tell rookies to get you stuff and, and do stuff for you. So. It took me about five years before I was able to become that veteran. So how does it feel to become an alpha talk on this? Oh one? man, it was great. You know, I felt like I was, <laughs> you know, with the with the big guys kind of hanging around them and uh, make, getting my bags carried to the to the to, uh, <laughs> to the to the plane and to the room and having guys get me breakfast. That was it was fun, but I didn't do it too much because I'm you know I'm more of a kind of a cool person, so I didn't want to haze the rookie guys. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you spent with Seattle for about nine years. Yeah. And now the city wants an NBA team yes. once again, so mm -hmm. thoughts? I think uh, they most definitely deserve an NBA team because they're uh, one, of the, one of the best, some of the best fans in, 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 uh, in the NBA. Um, when I first went there, they have history there. You know, Lenny Wilkins was there, Sean Kemp. Uh, as well as Gary Payton, Detlef Shrimp, you know, Hershey Hawkins, you know, they're, they're big basketball, they're, they're great basketball town. Um, and, and hopefully the next city that gets the NBA team, hopefully will be Seattle. I think it will be Seattle, because I think they have the fans to support it and they already have the blueprint of having a team there. So I think everything is in place, they just have to just get a team there.